subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savitre. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 19th of August. Indian Army personnel one terrorist killed in encounter in Jammu and Kashmir's Rajouri. Exiled President Ghani defends decision to flee says left Kabul to prevent bloodshed. A newly born Royal Bengal Tiger Cubs in Bangladesh expected to attract visitors after lockdown. And now for all the details. An Indian Army soldier was killed during a fierce encounter with terrorists in Rajouri district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Thursday. A terrorist was also killed in the encounter. Security forces had launched a search operation in the region in the morning following inputs about the presence of terrorists in the area. The search operation turned into an encounter after the terrorists opened fire on the forces who retaliated. In the ensuing encounter, two soldiers were injured and one of them succumbed to his injuries. The encounter was underway till the last reports came in. According to media reports, the terrorists recently infiltrated from across the border. This is the second encounter between terrorists and security personnel in the region in August this year. India has long accused that Pakistan aids terrorists infiltrate across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Scores of Afghan nationals in India gathered outside the embassies of the US and Australia in New Delhi on Thursday, seeking immigration visas following Taliban's takeover in Afghanistan. India has also introduced a new category of e-visa for Afghans seeking refuge in the country. Meanwhile, India's foreign minister has said his country is monitoring the situation in Afghanistan and their priority is the safe return of Indian nationals. Afghan nationals gathered in large numbers outside the embassies of Australia and the United States in Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday seeking immigration visas. following the recent takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban Australia has said it will offer 3000 places in its humanitarian visa program specifically for those fleeing Afghanistan the visa seekers in India said they were facing a lot of problems in the immigration process and claimed the UN refugee agency UNHCR is also not helping them at such a time mere ko dekh lo 2 saal hua main India mein rehta hu abhi tak mera वो इंटरव्यू का टाइम भी नहीं आया है पता भी नहीं है और जब उधर चलोगे तो आपको एक स्टैम्प और कर लेगा चलो छः महीना और आप इधर रह सकते हो बस बाकी कुछ कुछ और ऐसे हम लोग कब तक ऐसे जिए भाई मीन वाइल इंडिया फॉरेन मिनिस्टर एस जयशंकर आफ्टर चेयरिंग अ यूएन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल मीटिंग ऑन वेंसडे सेड इंडिया इज केयरफुली मॉनिटरिंग द सिचुएशन इन अफगानिस्तान एंड इट्स अप्रोच वुड बी गाइडेड बाई इट्स रिलेशनशिप विद द अफगान पीपल He said right now the priority is the safe return of Indian nationals. Well, at the moment uh, we are like everybody else very carefully following developments in Afghanistan. Uh, I think our focus uh, is on uh, ensuring the uh, security uh, in Afghanistan and the safe return of Indian nationals who are there. India earlier this week airlifted hundreds of its citizens including embassy staff from Kabul. and efforts are underway to bring more people it has also introduced a new category of e visa for afghan nationals to fast track their applications for entry into india after security clearance afghan president ashraf ghani speaking from exile in the united arab emirates has clarified that he had left kabul to prevent bloodshed and also denied reports that he had taken large sums of money with him Ghani has been bitterly criticized for flying out of Afghanistan as Taliban forces entered Kabul. His comments come as US President Joe Biden said US troops may stay in Afghanistan beyond 31 August deadline. Afghanistan's exile president Ashraf Ghani defended his decision to leave the country saying on Wednesday he had to do so to prevent bloodshed. 
Ghani has been bitterly criticized for flying out on Sunday as Taliban forces entered Kabul. In his first public comments from exile in the UAE, Ghani also denied reports that he had taken large sums of money with him. The third reaction before us, Mabakhbal Kari daftar ke adi wo razinay taksi ma uqat tar ki baul. Maspkin zde fa uzarat tar awanum tar so de Kabul kar de nazm le para sauk awedari tar larshu. Meanwhile, thousands of diplomats, foreign citizens and ordinary Afghans are trying to leave the country. Since the weekend, Kabul's airport has played host to scenes of chaos as crowds try to leave, fearing a return to the Taliban's hardline rule. At a Pentagon press briefing, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said U.S. troops do not have the capability to help get people to the airport in Kabul to be evacuated because they are focused on securing the airfield. Meanwhile, taking to Twitter, Afghanistan's top peace official Abdullah Abdullah said that he, along with former Afghan President Hamid Karzai, met with a delegation from the Haqqani Network militant group and the Taliban. In the meeting, they exchanged views on the security of citizens in Kabul and across Afghanistan, unity and cooperation for the future of the country. On Thursday, the self-proclaimed caretaker president of Afghanistan, Amrullah Saleh, tweeted that Afghanistan is too big for Pakistan to swallow and too big for Talibs to govern. As the Taliban took control over Afghanistan on August 15 and Ghani left the country, Amrullah Saleh announced that under no circumstances he will bow to the Taliban. Though Saleh's whereabouts are unknown, he is believed to be in Panjshir province of Afghanistan. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed has said that Prime Minister Imran Khan and his cabinet would be deciding on recognizing the Taliban government in Afghanistan while adding that a peaceful and stable Afghanistan was in the interest of Pakistan. US and Afghan officials have long claimed Pakistan enjoys considerable influence with the Taliban and the insurgents have sanctuaries in the country. Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed on Wednesday said that Prime Minister Imran Khan and his cabinet would decide on recognizing the Taliban government in Afghanistan, while adding that a peaceful and stable Afghanistan was in the interest of Pakistan. Speaking to reporters in Islamabad, the Interior Minister called Afghanistan's exiled President Ashraf Ghani as corrupt and criticized him for fleeing as Taliban forces entered Kabul. He said Pakistan had played a significant role in the Afghan peace process and still advocates a peaceful political settlement. We are the Churchill post of the world. No superpower can bypass us. So we are for peace, we are for the negotiation and we want that this place, Afghanistan, should be for all the religion groups, for uh, studies for women, we all support this and we stand with internationally. US and Afghan officials have long claimed that Pakistan enjoys considerable influence with Taliban and the insurgents have sanctuaries in the country, while its main military-run intelligence service also gives them support. So far, continuing to make overtures to the Taliban, Pakistan's close ally China has said it would recognize the Taliban regime after the government formation while British and Canadian Prime Ministers have said they have no plans to recognize the Taliban government. Moving on, students of a medical college in Pakistan-administered Kashmir were brutally beaten up and tortured by police recently for holding a protest demanding reimbursement of their fees. The incident yet again exposed the indifferent attitude the locals in the illegally occupied region have to face for voicing even their just concerns. Students of a medical college in Pakistan administered Kashmir were brutally beaten up and tortured by police recently for demanding reimbursement of their fees. The students of Mohyuddin Islamic Medical College in Mirpur were protesting against the college administration for releasing the 50,000 annual fees that they submit for recreational activities which have remained paused due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But instead of resorting to talks, the college administration involved the police which resulted to tear gas shelling, firing and baton charging the students, leading to clashes in which several of them were injured. 
پھر وہ کہتے ہیں ہم نے آپ سے نا پیسفلی بات کرنی ہے ادھر آئے ہیں انہوں نے پوچھا ہے کہ کون ہے کدھر ہے کی وغیرہ ہم نے بتایا انہوں نے بس کچھ اور سنا نہیں ہم سے کوئی ایک صرف انہوں نے کوشچن پوچھا ہے ایک آنسر لیا ہے اور مارنا شروع کر دیا دی شیم فل ایکٹ ہیز یٹ اگین ایکسپوز ان ڈفرینٹ ایٹیٹیوڈ آف دی پاکستان گورنمنٹ ٹوورڈس دی لیگلی آکیوپائڈ ریجن Locals have long blamed they are denied fundamental rights and are meted out with severe brutality for even voicing their concerns. As a rare species in Bangladesh, the Bengal tiger has been of great attention to the public, with restrictions on social gatherings and tourist destinations being lifted from Thursday. Zoo authorities in Bangladesh's National Zoo are expecting that thousands of visitors would show up to meet the newly born pair of twin royal Bengal tiger cubs when the zoo reopens. Bangladesh's National Zoo was blessed with the arrival of a pair of twin royal Bengal tiger cubs in May. And zoo authorities are expecting that thousands of visitors would show up to meet the cubs when the zoo reopens. A tigress named Belly gave birth to the twin cubs in May at the zoo in capital Dhaka's Mirpur section. Their father is a royal Bengal tiger named Tagore. Zoo authorities said owing to the pandemic-induced closure for months together, they were born amid a quiet environment that provided natural mating opportunity for animals. After a nearly seven month shutdown, the zoo reopened on November last year. But the new surge in COVID-19 cases prompted authorities to shut it down again on April 2nd this year. Meanwhile, starting Thursday, restrictions on social gatherings and tourist destinations will be lifted and there will be no COVID-19 curbs in place in Bangladesh. Bangladesh has so far reported a total of 24,719 deaths and 144,644 confirmed cases. Several craftsmen are honing their skills and boosting their incomes with the help of the School of Designs in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The Government Institute has been working over the years to promote the local handicraft sector. Several craftsmen are honing their skills under the School of Designs established for the promotion of local handicraft sector in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir. The School of Designs, a unit of the Directorate of Handicrafts and Handloom of Jammu and Kashmir, has been playing a tremendous role in shaping and modifying all kinds of Kashmiri art products with many latest designs and experimentations which have been receiving a good response. Kashmir's history is very rich and handicraft products made by artisans of the valley are famous across the globe. With the help of professional designers, the craftsmen of this institute are applying their wood carving and embroidery skills on products including paper mash, kani shawls and carpets. हर किसी क्राफ्ट में नए नए डिजाइन्स हमने इनोवेट किए हैं। जब हम बाहर वो किसी मतलब जो बाहर प्राइवेट कारीगर है, हम उनको देते तो ऑब्वियसली उनका काम बढ़ जाता है इससे। जब नए नए डिजाइन्स इनोवेट होते हैं और जब टूरिस्ट्स भी यहाँ पर आते हैं आप क्योंकि यहाँ पर एक चीज़ फायदा है यहाँ पर हर कोई क्राफ्ट एसेंबल है एक ही जगह यहाँ पर टूरिस्ट्स को हर किसी क्राफ्ट का जायजा ले सकते हैं लाइव डिमॉन्स्ट्रेशन दे सकते हैं ऐसे तो फायदा मिलता है मतलब डिपार्टमेंट के लिए भी Craftsmen of the valley hope that new designs and reorientation of old designs will give a distinct feature to the products and attract customers towards handicrafts and help them increase their sales while giving a boost to the industry. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.